Thank you very much, Shiv. Did I get it right then? Did I get it right, Shiv? Was that right? Hands up who listen to Premier Gospel. Wow. We need to work on that. We need to work on that. I speak to, I'm going to speak to Moyo after this, so we need to work on that. So only about five of you listen to Premier. How many listen to Premier Christian Radio? Oh, okay. It's, it's a bit better. It's a bit better. But we're going we're gonna to try and convert you anyway, so it's all good. Um, just out the front. So um, the ushers, could you please get ready with a collection? We're going to do a collection for Great Ormond Street Hospital. But before we do the collection, I'm going to call a young man who I just met at the front. He's from Great Ormond Street Hospital. He can talk about all the good works that they do because he's a better known than me. So all the ushers, could you get yourself ready? Bradley from Great Ormond Street Hospital. Can you give him a cheer, please? Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, yep, my name's Bradley. So thank you, everyone, for welcoming me along. Um, this is something I do regularly um, and rarely do we have the chance to get up and talk at an event as big as this so thank you all um, for inviting me along um, and supporting such a great cause as i said my name is bradley i have the privilege of being an ambassador volunteer for great ormond street children's hospital I'm delighted to be here tonight, and I want to thank all of you for supporting the children, the families, and the staff at Great Ormond Street. Sometimes it's better known as GOSH. Every day brings new challenges at GOSH, um, with around 620 children and young people arriving at the hospital. 365 days of the year, um, including Christmas Day, New Year's Day. So at GOSH, no matter what day, what time, the children simply come first. So every day at GOSH, doctors and nurses, they battle the most complex illnesses and the brightest minds simply come together to achieve pioneering medical breakthroughs. Last year, the hospital had nearly 300,000 appointments and admissions. Many of these children, like my son, have rare, complex, and life-threatening medical conditions that simply can't be treated anywhere else in the, in, in the world. And each year, more and more children from across the country and across the world come to GOSH for help. And often, for some families, coming to GOSH is literally their last hope. So the hospital has relied on charitable support since opening its doors way back in 1852. And yes, whilst the NHS meet the day-to-day -day running costs of the hospital, it's, gosh, literally rely on support and charitable funds to make it the hospital that it is today and literally keep it above and beyond the place it is to just make it simply amazing. So it's with your support and the kind generosity of people like yourselves that allow the charity to fund the four vital areas. Firstly, your, your donations fund groundbreaking research. The charity funds pioneering research to find treatments for the most complex children's illnesses and improve the lives of young patients. Over the next five years, the charity plans to invest more than 50 million pounds into paediatric rare disease research and there is simply not another hospital in the world that can do this. Secondly, your donations fund the rebuilding and redevelopment. As I said, GOSH dates back to 1852. So it's very old, very old buildings and it's constantly battling with old buildings that need urgently need to be replaced or updated and in order to maintain this and keep it so advanced and literally position it as one of the world's leading hospitals, Gosh desperately needs to keep updating and create an additional space for more children to be treated. Thirdly, purchasing advanced medical equipment. Last year, as a charity, we funded over four million, well, nearly five million pounds 
towards life-saving medical equipment. And this money has allowed the clinical and research teams to make the most of the advances that we have in medical science and technology that just literally saves young people's lives. And finally, your donations provide vital child and family support services. I can tell you firsthand, life at Gosh is it's an emotional experience. And what my family experienced on every visit to Gosh, it, it's something we thought you only ever see on TV, or it's something that happens to other families. And I can tell you, it's reality. And it's happened to me, and it can happen to any family. So, so Gosh not only cares for sick children, it cares for the whole family. This care, it comes in many different forms, and that can come from financial and spiritual counseling to the provision of accommodation for the parents of, and, and the families. So often children can be in gosh for weeks, months, or, or sadly, even years at a time. And having family close to the hospital is it, vital for the children's well-being, for their recovery, and I can tell you as a, as a parent, it's also very important for us brave and, and petrified, scared parents who desperately just need to be there with their children. So what, what brings me here today? My identical twins, Austin and Freddie, um, they decided to enter the world very, very early. Um, they were due in December and they decided to join in August. So they, they clearly wanted to be summer babies, not Christmas babies. Um, they were born at 25 weeks, and they weighed, Austin weighed one pound 10, and Freddie weighed one pound 11. So this meant we were told they had less than 10% chance of survival. And at one point, Austin had less than 1% 1 1 chance of survival. So this meant me and my wife living in the UK's highest level neonatal intensive care unit for four months, ju just down the road, um, Homerton in Hackney. And day and night, we watched our boys through incubators. They were surrounded by tubes, wires, y you name it, alarms going off. We weren't allowed to touch them for months, cuddle them, or, or literally do, do anything that new parents should be able to do, change nappies, etc. Due to Austin and Fred in Freddie's severe prematurity, they both had chronic lung disease and a, a rare bleed on the brain. Um, fortunately, Freddie's cleared, um, but Austin's didn't. And at just five weeks, um, weighing still under two pounds, Austin was transferred to Great Ormond Street for his first groundbreaking um, brain surgery. And, and this is something that um, only a few hospitals in the world can do. And the consultant at Great Ormond Street is the leading consultant that, that actually does this brain surgery. So it's here that our gosh journey began. So now at Three and a half years of age, um, Austin and Freddie are, uh, as you can imagine, do, do, doing what young boys should be doing. Um, but Austin's had four different brain surgeries. He has a VP shunt, which he will have for the rest of his life. Um, this allows um, his brain to work, is probably the, the, the best way to put it. Um, he's had a very rare hernia operation, along with lots of other surgery and I can honestly stand here today and I can tell you without Austin having the amazing doctors, nurses um, at, at Great Ormond Street, he, he simply wouldn't be with us today and he wouldn't be the happy, determined little warrior um, and, and, and best friend and brother to Freddie. So as I'm sure you can imagine, um, I, I'm very, very passionate about the hospital and I, I make sure that at every opportunity I can come and talk to kind people like yourselves just to get the message out there, just how important to, 
to me, my family, to, to, to his friends, that, that Great Ormond Street are. And I just want to thank you all for supporting something that is just simply so close to mine and my family's heart. So we are, along with many other lucky parents, we, we can say that Gosh is and it will always be part of our family life. So on behalf of the children, their families and all the staff at Great Ormond Street, I just really want to thank you all for taking time to listen to me and for your support. So thank you very much. Thank you. Isn't that amazing? Do you know where to give God glory to God for that, right? That's a powerful testimony there. Has anybody got any sick children been through all that? I have a granddaughter who's been through the same. Been at Gosh and my, my godson, he passed away a few years ago. He was, he was a resident at Gosh, I should say. Might as well say he was there for most of his life. So I fully understand. So we have the orchestra. Can we give these guys a cheer? That's not good enough. We came here to praise. We came here to praise. Come on, let's give a praise. We come to give a praise. We just had a powerful testimony there. Two young babies. One shouldn't be here. They shouldn't even be here, right? They shouldn't be here. But by God's grace. Now, we look at the doctors and say, it's the doctors. But remember, who made the doctors? Who gave the doctors the skill, the technology to think that way? To even, even imagine to do an operation on a small, small baby. I don't think you don't realize how small a baby is when they're about a pound. They're about, just about fit in your hand, right? So you could imagine. You've got a little baby. And you got to imagine, they're going to go into do an operation, open the skull, do all that, and how small a brain everything works. That's, that's amazing. That's amazing. That's by God's grace that he's still here to have a testimony, to testify. So we have to give God praise for all that. We've just heard a powerful testimony. Now, sometimes we don't realize what God does. Even if the guy was not a Christian, the, um, the doctor. But you know what? God's in the midst of every situation. It doesn't matter. Somebody was praying. And I, I can honestly say that right or wrong, both me and my wife, we, we said we were religious, right? But we didn't pray. And when we were in the situation we were in, every day we prayed. Every day at Great Ormond Street, still to this day, we go to the chapel. And every day now... Since we went through what we went through, we pray and we thank God for getting us and our children through what we went through. So, thank you. Thank you, thank you. There you go. Power in the power of prayer. That's the only fight that we have. That's the only weapon we have is prayer. We can't do it on our own. We can fight. We can be big muscles, strong, six foot, whatever. That doesn't mean anything. When God says, get on your knees. Get on your knees. It's time to pray. So, the ushers, where are the ushers? Please raise your hands. So, they're going to go around by the orchestra play. And please, whatever is laid in your heart, just place, place in the offering. It's going to a good cause. It's not going to the past. It's not going to this. We don't worry about that. We're just giving it to the glory of God. At the end of the day. Amen? Amen? See, when we start talking about money in church, people go very, very quiet. Very, very quiet. Like they made the money themselves. But it's all good. So, orchestra, take it away. Then. 